Oh, hi there. Um, first thing I'd like to say is uh, Merry Christmas, if anybody uh, actually sees this. Um, hopefully somebody will. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'll say I hope you have a, a Merry, not too Merry Christmas, but uh, have a good one out there. Um, so yeah, so basically, um, like I said, this is going to be a very, hopefully a short series of videos. I'll try and keep everything as short as I can on how I um, make a knife. Um, now, I've, I've not put many videos out for a while. Um, the reason for that has been, been a couple of things. Um, one of them is actually a lot of the videos that I've done, as I've explained in my videos, I don't think I'm an expert at this. I'm, I'm very much learning and things like that. So what I've tended to do is when I've done something and I've thought, oh yeah, that's, that's sort of like some probably really good information for somebody who's at the just starting out or as a learner or you know progressing and things like that so it might have been some use use to somebody you know rather than me just hammering away at things well not hammering away at anything you know hacking away at anything um so um that's that's why i've, I've done the sort of things i've done however i just thought well it might be good because i've talked about a lot of the things that i uh you know that i the way I, you know, the way I approach things, I suppose, and it's, it's my philosophy, if you want. And when I first started out, what I said when I first started out was that um, I just, my goal was just to make the best knives that I could, um, and the best sort of like the best. I, w I wanted to make knives that people would take out and use and work. Um, I'm very, very much, I suppose, a late starter in this sort of game. So I thought, well, the last thing I wanted to do was to start trying to do a knife with loads of fancy ricassos, fancy materials, fancy engraving and all that kind of stuff. You know, I very much want the knife I make to be a culmination of everything that I've done and that I do. Um, I will say you anybody on how I make knives. So although I've had a bit of a ramble to start with, um, going from my philosophy, the first thing I start with is my steel and I use O1 high carbon tool steel. I only use O1. I have used stainlesses, uh, probably 12C27 because that's um, very much a, a home um, bait type of thing. So you can do it with that. Um, I'm personally not keen. I love, I just love wood, carbon steel, leather and it's what I like. It's what I like working in and there's tons and millions of stuff out there. Um, I know there's, I'm not going to diss it, I'm not saying oh carbon's better than stainless and all that kind of, it depends on the kind of person you are, what you're using the knife for, um, how much you will look after the knife, what you want, what you don't want, you know, so I, it, I'm not dissing anything, um, but the reality is what I'm saying from this is you will get what you pay for. Now I buy British O1 high carbon tool steel, um, or tool steel. And the reason for that is it's good quality. I also use German. German make a very good high quality um, O1 tool steel. So that's where I start. Okay. Um, however, I start with the best steel I can and I do the best heat treatment I can. That took me quite a lot of money. I wasted probably a couple of hundred dollars of steel cutting into little bits and doing the different heat treats, finding out what works. And I do know when, when you watch some of the people on telly, I know Sandy, he never actually tells you what temperatures he's working at and things like that. It's not that it's a closely guarded secret. You can find the information out on how to get the best heat treatment for this steel anywhere. There's tons and tons and tons of information out there. You have to read around and find the best of it, but there's tons of it out there. Um, but the reality is, uh, to give you an example, in my kiln, when I heated the steel up, to a, it went to seven, I think that the parameters between, they say between 780 and 820 is the guideline for your, uh, to get to your crit critical heat, the, the critical temperature. Um, and then obviously, it, everybody knows you soak it. I mean, mine, mine starts around go, knocking on the door 20 minutes before the first one comes out, first piece comes out. And then you quench it. Now at 780, I got, it went 62. 63 at 790, 64 at 800, 65 at 810, and back to 64 at 820. So the critical temperature on my kiln is 820. If yours is different to mine, you might want 820. You might have to take your kiln to 825, but by doing a series of tests, you'll see the difference of how it goes up and down. And that's really, really important because it's really important to know the hardness your steel is at before you go to temper. Because the harder the steel is at, the hotter your temper needs to be to get that to get it back to the, the point that you actually want it on the Rockwell. And then, um, and anybody who says, oh Rockwell, it doesn't mean everything. It doesn't mean everything. 
but it does tell you a bloody lot and it lets you know that you're somewhere in the ballpark with your heat treatment and there is no other way for ordinary people like us to do that without taking it to a laboratory and paying for it so yep so i'll start with the steel okay now oh my god So yeah, so we have, have the steel out. Now what I do is I give it a bit of a clean. Now I'm only using half of this steel. I already have some of the uh, batch I want to use already done. And I tend to work, I, I work in batches of four up until I do my heat treat because that just makes more economical. So there we go, up to there. Then it's on with a bit of the old engineer's blue for the marking out. There we go. Then what I need to do is I need to leave that to dry. Right, so, yep, so I've got, while I'm waiting for the uh, engineer's glue to dry. Now the, the uh, knife I'm gonna be making on here is a bit of a design now. Like I said, when it says it comes to designs, keep it simple. Now what I'm actually doing here, um, and again, it doesn't mean to say that you have to stick rigidly to any one thing. I, I use templates, I have a template here, I'll show you in a moment, and I use it to make, and I'm, I've got some woodlaws that I'm actually working on here, I call them the woodlaw clones, um, from Ray, um, great design, you know, use a uh, great knife, great design, um, but it doesn't do everything that I want, I, depend, I think it depends on really what it is you're doing when you're out there, however, I love the handle, I've not found a handle I like more, and I put... Um, I tend to put the coke bottle type of thing on just about every knife I make to, to different levels, uh, you know, different amounts, like depending on what the knife is aimed at doing. Um, however, what I've actually done here is I've taken a blade shape, which I know does a lot of the things I want it to do better than the wood law. Um, and that's because when I'm out and about, I don't just do wood, wood crafting. Um, I also hunt and I fish and, you know, do a lot of things like that in the outdoors. Um, and what I found is I made I've made a, a sort of a clone of the um, the Skookum bushcraft knife. However, I don't prefer the handle on that. But that bla that general blade shape lends itself much better to slicing tasks rather than cutting. But still does an extremely good job at cutting because the curvature when you've got on here and this is this is basically my template. I've already made one up. I've got one up somewhere. I've got one up to the point I'm working with now. Um, this is in four mil. I'm going to taper the tang, and it will have a scandy. And I'm going to do the same with this one, but this is going to be three mil. So this is three mil steel I'm using for this one, just so I can have a bit of a balance, see what they're like. But this this having more of a sweep and more of a belly lends itself to doing a lot more of the things that I want my knife to do. Um, and when I'm out and about, I, carry, I tend to carry a belt knife. And then I'll just have a small pocket knife, something like a, I might, well, I might even have two. I'll often have a, an SAK in my bag and then maybe a, a Mercator as a backup, which is a good little skinning knife So and for fish. So, yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the outline of this one. And like I say, typical Woodlaw designed handle, even the length, but married to much more, more of a skookum blade. And like the older blade shape works just from, if, if it didn't, you know, no matter who endorsed them and all the rest of it, people, they would not be so popular. You know, so, and I like, like with the Woodlaw handle, I tweak my Woodlaw handles a little bit. Um, and depending on who I'm making them, sometimes people say I make them a bit thicker, make them a bit thinner. And I also don't tend to have the, um, I put like the, the apex pommel, but the edges, I don't make them as sharp because they can dig in and rub. So I prefer just, just that little bit more rounded, so it's a little bit more tactile. Yep. So, uh, actually, um, marking out a knife. What I don't like to do is is um, is to sort of like put it on somewhere and then clamp it down. And what I want is I want something approximate to this, but not necessarily identical. So even when I'm grinding, I tend to do it a little bit more to eye and a little bit more to feel. So I'm just put it on here, give it a rough ground ground, and then. Basically, so I, you know, the knife I make might be slightly different. It's one of those things where if it's your knife and you know it, and you know it intimately because you use it a lot, you would know the difference between your version and, and a slightly different one. Nope, not quite dry, but it's nearly there. So there we go. Yep. So that's my little template. And now we're going to go over 
Oops, not from there, why not? And I'm going to bob this into the vise. And we'll... <coughs> I do like, although I'd, <clears throat> I'd have to say I'd love to have a, might get a metal cutting band saw, but for the amount I actually do, that's a, it's a, I only cut a, about 30 seconds out of that actual cutting. But again, I like to do it that way um, because the first thing is I'm not introducing extra heat into the blade. So that's why I like to do it that way. I try to keep everything I do, I do bare handed and uh, try and keep it as, uh, try and keep my workpiece as cool as possible. That's it, that's the way. Now, I'm going to give that a few more minutes to cool down, uh, to, to dry off before I start grinding and get myself soft. So once I've got um, that initial, just the, the steel just cut to size, what I do then is, this is when I, I like to my, mark out my uh, where my handle holes are going to go. So I'm putting that back in here nice and straight, making sure I follow the original lines. There we go. And these are just my main, the main holes that I use, and even that's changed over time. Now what I do is I've marked those. Now to ensure that I'm getting exactly where I want, and there's been no vary, you know, there's no variation in the centre. Use a straight line and through, and then mark each one exactly to that centre line. It starts to ensure that I'm getting everything as lined up and as even so it looks as good as it possibly can. And mark that steel for two pins. One. Go. So that's my uh, that's my holes tapped out, and then we go from there. And uh, time to do the first bit of grinding.
So, oops. So that sounded a bit funny then. Let me plug that. Yep, so that's about it for this uh, particular video. Um, as you can see now, I have I've brought these up to the same state, and I also have a small, uh, small bush crafter, and also a larger camp knife. So that'll be my batch that I'm going to work work on, um, on for for this um, piece. Now, but obviously, I'll just follow the making of the one because I talk too much anyway. So, yep, so that's what I am to there. So as you can see, everything just nice and steady. If, if you're using um, the wheels, a bit of a tip there. Go for the biggest wheels you can. The smaller the wheel, the harder it is to get a nice finish. So I tend to retain the small wheels for the little, just small, intricate bits, which are then much easier to control. If not, um, try and, like I say, just try and keep to the bigger wheel as you can. Um, and less is more. Less is always more. So I hope that was interesting up to this point. Um, that's probably the quickest part. Next part, I'm going to be drilling and um, heat treatment. Um, well, drilling, clean up, taking the bevels off, and heat treatment. So yeah. So with that, thank you Good for watching. That. Thank you very much for watching, and uh, I will sign off. And if I don't get another one out before Christmas, have a great Christmas, like I said. And I'll catch you on the flip side.